On episode one, we landed in Iceland, met super talented, fun new people, but the Vada broke my heart with a software bug that made me crash not once, but twice. Watch that first if you're thinking about getting or flying the Avada. Now on to episode two. This is the story of two friends traveling through Iceland, banger hunting, looking for inspiration, and getting some travel feels. Good morning. Morning. Day two in Iceland. That's a waterfall. Yeah. That's great. The last time me and Peter went out on an epic trip together to what I now call banger hunt was in 2018. 2018. I don't know how that happens. Yeah, I don't. How does how does stone just bend like that? It's like Minecraft. Kai would love this. That's three years, 2019, 2020, and 2021, that we really didn't do any significant traveling together. Let me tell you what happened. That's the FPV spot right there. Not the Avada spot, but we'll go get, we'll give the DJI FPV a chance. <laughs> I've lost all faith. <laughs> I'm scared for you. Peter, you're Dude. really going hard on the photos. Yeah, I, I love photos. I feel like we haven't done this for a while. Like actually yeah, yeah, getting photos, it's photos. It's been a while, I know. Is this where we should announce that, uh, do you think we should announce it now that, um, that we're going Instagram only? Quitting YouTube, just going Instagram. I had a special presentation prepared for that. Ah, oh, sorry. Just Maddie's gonna start working on the grid. Yeah, finally. <laughs> I'm gonna start posting like at least once a month. <laughs> Shout out to this guy for uh, giving up his location for us to, to do this real fast. So, met, met that guy. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thank Enjoy. Appreciate it. Bye bye. I'm gonna be a video now. Heck yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward. <laughs> Thanks, dude. It's always so cool meeting people on, on the road. We're just in the middle of nowhere in yeah. Iceland. The one guy, and he's like, I know you. We got cool. buddies. Oh, this looks sketch. Oh, like yeah. <laughs> Photos are always the first thing I do when I get to a nice location. Video is always the second thing I do. And if I could only have time for one, I would still choose photos every time. Holy moly. <laughs> guys know how I always stand on a kind of a sketchy spot to do that FPV? This might be a little bit too much. I'm a, I might just go back there and ask if somebody else can stand here. Yo, highlighter! Walk careful. Peter's getting old. He's, he's getting a little getting freaked old, out. Guys. <laughs> we, have, we have families. It's a lot different than Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just saying that usually I stand in the sketchy spot while I'm FPVing. This might be a little bit too much for me. So if you maybe want to st stand over there and I'll FPV you. Do I still have to give you a thumbnail? <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about why we took such a long break from doing these epic trips. You could blame the pandemic, sure. And we definitely pushed it too hard. We did a trip to Dubai and then Revelstoke with a one day rest and it was just too much. We got burned out. But I think the bigger problem was for me, I lost sight of the value of traveling, specifically this type of traveling. And it's funny, whenever people ask me, what inspires you to create? First off, I think, what a weird question. I don't know at all. But on this trip, I realized for the first time just how much epic, beautiful landscapes, nature, how much it all inspires me. Traveling is one of the most inspiring things I can think of but it's not just that. Literally hands shaking. Oh, I'm glad I didn't crash it. <laughs> oh, that gets the heart going right there. Oh my Lord. My hands are just shaking. <laughs> I'm so nervous for you. That was like Valtteri Bottas all over again, bro. It's a little sketchy we got the edge. I'm yeah. like, remember that you're on an edge. Remember that you're on the cliff. <laughs> Dude, when you were whipping through some of those canyons and you, I, I could see the drone just like, bye. I was like, he sits going for it. Like, you got to commit. Oh, that was, you I have, have to risk the biscuit, you know? That's the only way to get the shot. The best support team. <laughs> Couldn't have done it without you. I feel like I just like did the, a hardcore workout. Like, that's what my body feels like. If you want to feel some adrenaline, like, you want to be an adrenaline junkie, 
just fly FPV. Oh. It makes normal droning feel like you're on a Sunday stroll. Even more than that, traveling with someone like Peter is 10 times more inspiring. Not just because we get along super well and we have an incredible amount of fun, Peter is always pushing to get a shot that stands out. I still remember our very first trip we did in 2017 to Italy and Switzerland. We had shot all day, traveled, and we finally got to our hotel in Zermatt pretty late. We were exhausted, so tired. I was already in bed, about to fall asleep, and what's Peter doing? He's trying to set up a time lapse of Matterhorn and the stars. Traveling with someone who not only pushes you every day, but has that same vision of trying to capture something. Something that shows the thing that is inspiring me in that moment. That pushes me to do everything I can in these moments to eternalize and show the world what we've experienced and how awe-inspiring this world of ours is. Perfect example, at the end of the day, we were racing to get to one of my favorite spots in Iceland for sunset, Stocksness. I probably said that wrong, but it's this beautiful black sand beach with just the coolest mountains in the background and pools of water that give these insane reflection shots. The only problem was we were running out of time watching the sunset as we were driving. And I gotta admit, I was pretty bummed. Just seeing the perfect light slip through our hands like sand, it sucked, but one of the best things about photography, video, and banger hunting is that we still went out there not giving up, seeing what we could possibly get. And you know what? It was one of the coolest experiences of the trip. I bought these boots about five years ago, and this was the first place they ever, they've ever ever been. And now it's, they're back, yeah, back, they're back in the sand. Do you remember that sick footage you shot of me going backwards? I had long hair again, I've cut it and grown it back twice. That's so cool. <laughs> Boy, my mind being back here with you, to be honest. A lot of places in the world, we've been back to a lot of places in the world, but for some reason, being back on this beach with you is very, it doesn't even feel real, but it feels very like all encompassed. Like it's, yeah. it's like, we, we did it. I don't know what we did. <laughs> I have like, no idea what we did. Like when we were here, we were just kind of figuring it out and now I feel like maybe we figured it out a little bit more. I it's actually feel time. like we're a little bit more confused than ever, but... <laughs> I don't know, it just feels good to be back. I just, I don't know. I made coffee on this beach. I still post photos from this beach, and it's been five years. Do you think this is the mound? That's the one that we found? Wait, 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 wait. Let's... B-roll sequence. It's hard to tell in this footage, but it was so dark, but calm and peaceful. Just the very end of Blue Hour. The stars were out, the ocean was roaring, but it was so peaceful. I cranked up the ISO to 12,800 on the Sony and the footage was wild. I think if we weren't banger hunting, we would have completely missed out on an incredible experience. I'll never forget that evening. It's actually like pitch black out here. Still going strong. Oh yeah, <laughs> still making it work. Look at your screen, dude, it looks like midday. <laughs> yeah. It's so dark. We thought for sure we were getting anything, but uh, hey, I got at least something. We got, got something. One photo for sure. I think I got a really good photo of your hair again. You always get it. <laughs> you remember the last time we were here, you didn't drink coffee, so you couldn't appreciate the effort I went to to make coffee for you on the beach. I feel like we need to do it again tomorrow so that now as a new coffee drinker, you can appreciate having coffee on the Black Sand Beach in Iceland because it'll just be way better for you. Oh, full transparency. I thought you were a complete idiot. <laughs> did complete you? idiot. No, you didn't. <laughs> kind of. No, you didn't. What are you doing making coffee? Let's get bangers. You're like we making coffee, arrow pressing. <laughs> we got bangers of coffee being made. <laughs> That's the only reason I, I, I accepted the, the oh, film shots, making. Shots. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think this is one of my favorite spots in the whole world. Yeah, I think so too. This spot is just epic every time. I try to capture these images to inspire people to show them what it was like being there. But at the same time, through the process of traveling with friends, seeing the most unreal, unbelievable landscapes, I come home physically exhausted, but with my creative cup 
overflowing, inspired, ready to go. And I forgot that. I forgot I needed that. But now I remember. You getting the travel feels yet? 